bookcase as an example of an excellent job at putting together a ma manual. <laughs> so that was something we're proud to have heard. Any other questions? By the way, just to let you know, the banquet tomorrow night, the uh, program is going to be the museum and the changes that are going on at the museum. The other thing is the tour tonight. Uh, for those who went last year, you will be surprised what you see this year. There's been a lot of changes. And uh, one of the things that was one of the major changes, Mac, would you please stand, please? The media center is now dedicated to Max. We had our uh, ceremony last Tuesday, so it's now the Max Bodner Media Center. And you'll see a plaque. <laughs> and uh, we appreciate Max's input and his guidance uh, for the library. Uh, our plan is to have that library world class, but at the dinner tomorrow night, Tom and I are going to give you a presentation of what's new, what's going on, and where we're we going to go from here. And I think you'll be quite pleased. Okay. Yes. And one of the questions that was asked, uh, just to clarify, the, the facilities are open tonight, seven to nine. The museum is open tomorrow afternoon, two to four and Sunday, 2 to 5. Some people were questioning whether or not there were any hours be beyond tonight. So it's two hours tonight, 7 to 9, all of the facilities. The museum is open on normal Saturday hours, 2 to 4, and normal Sunday hours, 2 to 5. By, by the way, I don't know if we properly introduced Bob over here. Bob is the new deputy director. He's basically Tom's second in command Okay, for the museum organization. I am merely the curator. Okay? And don't you forget it. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to introduce Lynn Fisher. Stand up, Lynn, so they, they know who you are. One of the things we've done differently at the museum is he is now my assistant. And he's in charge of my life insurance, my health insurance, and all the other insurance. I pay his health insurance every month. Because <laughs> I don't really want the job. <laughs> anyway. Some of the things we've tried to do is, is put a stream of folks in place that basically if something happened to me or like I'm busy tremendously at work right now, Lynn steps in and takes over for, for things like that. So we try to put a little more continuum to operation so it's not dependent on a person, uh, which we felt was important. Okay? Question out here. Question out here. Well, I know. I think we're all getting to the point where after a couple seconds, what did you say? No. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? I really, I, oh, I really invite people to come tonight and look. Oh, by the way, one important thing. See, this happens to me, Gib. You give me something and I get distracted. Gib brought up a point. Tonight, if this is the one time that you come and see the museum and stuff, make sure you get to see the annex because it's going to be your last time. This time next year, that building will belong to the town. It will be empty, okay? And all the stuff is going to be over in the new building. We call it number three because we haven't figured out what to call it yet. But anyway, Ron Roach, stand up, Ron, so they can see you. Ron is in charge of facilities. And I look at Ron sometimes as kind of our miracle worker. If you can think of last year what that building, that old plumbing building looked like. All it was was an empty building. Go look at it now. His band of merry men and the wonders that Ron and his staff have done, you'll be amazed. Yeah, it's more a miracle staff. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's getting done. Yeah. And, and just think, just think when you walk into an annex and you say, my wife and I have got to move this sucker by next June? Well, that's the plan. Ron and the folks that we've got are saying, where's it all going to go? And there is a plan. Trust me, there's a master plan, and everything has got a place. So when you come next year, it will not belong to us. It will be a rec center for the town. And that was to keep the relationship very close between us and the town. The town has been tremendously supportive of us. They came to the dedication 
The whole town board was there for Max's dedication. The supervisor actually had a few kind words to say that are behind us. They said, what can we do to help you? Ron goes to all the board meetings. He is the token public person at all the board meetings, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so anyway, we're very involved in the community. And that's something that we try to perpetuate to make sure they understand very clearly our importance and they see us as the future destination that helps that time. Uh, excuse me, there was a question back here. I saw your hand. Charles, I'd like to thank the yes, sure. for giving us the uh, reviews this year. That was a very nice charitable donation. Thank you. Let me tell you how, how that worked. We're sitting in the board meeting and we're trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to figure out this budget, okay? And Jeff says, I think I have a solution. He says, I said, what could that be? And he says, let me read this letter. And I go, boy, there is a God someplace. But anyway, we really appreciate the donation that was made. We have a comment back here? <clears throat> Uh, I, I came in late, so I, I don't know if you discussed this. Um, a lot of people, I think, would like to help at the museum. Uh, myself, I live over in Vermont, in sort of a long haul over here. And uh, I noticed some friends of mine who were involved with uh, other activities. Uh, these uh, people organize like a boot camp uh, once a year where you go <coughs> I mean, as a volunteer for about a week, and uh, so you come over and do whatever is needed. You know, people have different skills. Uh, I would certainly like to come over, and I could spend a week. But you know, where to stay, how to feed people, and things like that. I mean, the needs aren't great, just like a bunkhouse or something. But um, you know, I'm sure you probably get. Quite a few volunteers uh, come over sometime. I'm sure we're going to need that when we begin that big move. <laughs> I I like that and think April and May of next year because the annex has got to be moved. A sign up sheet. Well, I, I I like that. I I really do. And uh, I want to make sure that we've got that one written down. Okay. Right, and if you own a big truck and trailer, make sure you bring that when you come, okay? Actually, one of the, I'll, let me just speak about volunteers a, a few minutes here. One of the volunteers, where's Joe? Is Joe in here? Joe. Yeah. there? Anyway, sometimes on Tuesdays, all of a sudden, these people show up, and I say to Ron, do you know who he is? No, but he's got a big truck and he really likes us. So. It's one of those things that people start coming here. We actually have got a lot of dedicated volunteers, but I love the idea of the boot camp. For one thing, that would get people here. If we do it around the conference, perhaps, it would give them one time where you can come and participate with us and actually see some of the workings that go on. I really like that idea. And we've got several garage bays. We'll just put up bunks, you know, and barbecue. What do you think, Ron? Yeah, we got the space. Okay. I wanted to mention one other thing that, uh, you know, we weren't doing right, uh, which I forgot to mention. And, and that is, uh, you know, we we're using the academy building on the town square, but it does not have any wheelchair access, and this is another complaint that uh, has been given to us, and, and we were basically told that we will never get a permanent charter as a museum as long as we're using that facility. And the other problem is that the facility is